happy Open Education Week! This is David Wiley from BYU bringing you the first of several short videos this week about why I think we should be open. In this first video I want to make the core argument that education is sharing. When you think about what teachers do in their interactions with students, we share the things we know, we share the things we know how to do, we share feedback, we share criticism, we share encouragement. All of our education related interactions with students really are interactions based on sharing. And the interactions that students have with us are sharing interactions as well. They share questions, they share things that they don't understand, and they share that both by raising their hand but also by turning in assignments, by sharing work, by sharing tests with us so that we can evaluate it, so that we can give feedback and give criticism and give encouragement. In fact, if there's no sharing happening between teachers and students, there is no education going on at all. And in fact, the educators that we think of as being the most successful are the ones who share most completely with the greatest proportion of their students, so that a successful educator really is a successful sharer. Now, knowledge is magical in a very particular way, and by that I mean the things that we know we can share with others without having to give them away. This is in contrast to physical expressions of the things that we know. When I take some of the things that I know and express them outside myself in a book, and I give that book to someone, I share that book with someone, they go away with it and I don't have access to it anymore. I've had to give it away in order to share it. But ideas and the things we know aren't like that. Importantly, when we take the things that we know and we express them outside ourselves in a digital format, those external expressions retain that same magical quality. So that while I might have to compete for access to the newspaper with my spouse while I wait for her to finish reading in the morning, when the news is instead of it being put in print, is put online, a million of us can read it all at the same time. And this is a very important advance. It's the first time in human history that both the things we know and the ways that we express the things we know outside of ourselves can both be given without being given away. And that gives us an unprecedented capacity to share in a way that we've never been able to share before. And in as much as sharing is educating, it gives us a capacity to educate in a way that we've never been able to educate before. Now what does the word share mean? Online it means copying and distributing when you think about file sharing, for example. I thought it'd be interesting just to look for a moment at the cost of copying, say, a 250-page book, what it might cost someone to write that book out by hand the way they did before the printing press, what it would cost to print that book through a print-on-demand service, and what it would cost to take an electronic copy of that book, put it in Amazon's cloud service, and copy it from there. Similarly, we do the same kind of analysis with distributing a book. If we're going to drop that handwritten book or the print-on-demand book and send it somewhere by mail, or again, take that electronic file, put it up in Amazon's uh, cloud service and let someone download it from there. Basically with digital technology and with the internet, copy and distribute have become essentially free. Now, importantly, sharing in educational context does not just mean pushing around documents. It doesn't just mean copy and distribute. It also means adapting and editing because we want people to make sense of or to make meaning of the information that we're trying to share with them. We want them to connect it to their prior knowledge, to understand how it relates to their life and to their past experience and why it's important for them. And this kind of adapting used to be very expensive to do when cut and paste meant taking scissors and taking glue or taking tape and literally cutting up a magazine and pasting it back together in some way. Well, today, if you have a Word document, for example, you just backspace over a couple of characters and put new characters in, and digital technology has made editing essentially free from a technical perspective as well. So we find our place in a situation where copy, distribute, and edit, all these things we think about in terms of normal sharing but also educational sharing are free, which means we can share as we never have before, and to repeat the refrain, we can educate in a way that we've never been able to before, except that we can't. Because when you think about what copyright regulates, it regulates these exact things, copying, distributing, and creating derivative works. So in fact, copyright actually cancels out many of the possibilities that are provided to us by digital media. Or we might say that what the internet enables, copyright forbids. And this is one of the fundamental tensions of our time. What are we to do about it? Well, I love the approach of the judo throw that says take your opponent's strength and use it against him. And of course, in the open community, that's exactly what we've done with the Creative Commons licenses, which use copyright machinery, copyright mechanisms, copyright licenses to enforce sharing, to say in a very strong sense that yes, you absolutely do legally have free permission to reuse, to redistribute, to revise, and remix. 
so that what the internet enables OER allows. In other words, these permissions given to us by open educational resources allow us to take full advantage of the technical capabilities presented to us by the internet so that we can share and educate at an unprecedented scale in a way we've never been able to before. And that's the first reason we should be open. Thank you.